Father, as we enter this service and we unravel the mystery of faith as we enter this service and we unveil the mystery of faith, oh God, we ask, oh God, that your scriptures come alive, oh God, that we can get into the intricacies of who you are, my God, and what faith is required for us to do what you need us to do on this earth, my God, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you praise, honor, and adoration, my God. What are the objectives this morning? If you are taking notes and you have your journal and your paper, make sure that you are making notes. Welcome. I see Fortune Online has just come on board on TikTok. Thank you so much, guys, for joining. And thank you so much that you are going to get into the word with us. This is Sunday morning, e-church, live and direct on this platform. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Get your pens, your Bibles, your journals out and your everything that you need to do to make a note. Hallelujah. The objectives this morning is that we're going to explore and we're going to unravel the mystery of faith. We are going to explore and we are going to unravel the mystery of faith. Somebody type in the comment section, the mystery of faith. Hallelujah. We're going to identify the sources of faith. We're going to go deeper into the faith realm. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. I see that. I'm having a multiple challenges and technical side, but I'm just going to make sure that I keep watch on that. I'm going to make sure that we are steering on forward. The devil is a liar. We are going forward. Hallelujah. The Bible identifies faith as a mystery. The Bible identifies faith as a conundrum. The Bible identifies faith as a puzzle, a hidden secret. You can also call it a riddle. Hallelujah. It's an unambiguous and ambiguous uncertainty. Hallelujah. Something that could be difficult to understand something that could be difficult to comprehend but faith is not allowed to remain a mystery this morning and that is why we are having this bible study this morning it should not be ambiguous to you it should not be a, a mystery to you it should not be something that you are unable to unpuzzle it should not remain a hidden secret and once you understand the mystery and you the, the intricacies of faith you now understand your journey and your walk as a christian talk to me somebody hallelujah Faith is not allowed to remain a mystery in your life. I hope you are telling yourself there that hallelujah right now. Faith will not remain a mystery in my life in Jesus mighty name. Child of God, understand that your life both in quality and in durability relies on your faith. Whether your life is going to be a qualitative life, whether your life is going to be a life of durability will rely mainly on your faith. Your spiritual wealth, your spiritual wealth and your worth is anchored on your faith. Talk to me somebody. There are things that we cannot experience until we understand faith. There are are things we cannot experience in the life in our walk in our walk with God until we unlock faith. Without faith, we cannot unlock certain mysteries. Hallelujah! Our very existence and our very survival, both here on earth and anywhere else, are anchored on our faith. Hallelujah! So I, I'm, I'm saying this background so that I can position in your mindset the importance of your faith. Hallelujah! Your faith is is will will determine your spiritual re relevance. It will determine determine the impact spiritually that you are going to make. Hallelujah. Whether it is here on earth or anywhere else in your businesses, anywhere that you would be partaking hallelujah it is all dependent on your faith talk to me hallelujah we are talking about the mystery of faith if you have just joined the uh, midday service hallelujah we are unraveling the mystery of faith hallelujah we are talking about existence without faith being an existence without impact so if you are going to make an impact in life you can only make that impact if you have faith hallelujah faith is that heart alignment with god and his word faith is that being on the same page with the word of god Faith is coming to the realization on the same frequency with God. So you need to be on the same frequency and the same wavelength with God. Talk to me, somebody. Faith is therefore coming into agreement with God on a particular issue. Faith is having no opinion of your own or belief that is contrary to that which is set out by God. It means that you are believing on what God has set out for you. Talk to me, somebody. Faith is seeing what God said or says about you. For you, it is what God said 
is that is important and critical. It is not the information that is a periphery that comes from friends, but you need to have the faith and the revelation thereof. Hallelujah. The faith is the linear equation that we are trying to unlock this morning. You are moving from the understanding to belief. You are moving from belief to achieving results. You cannot believe without having an understanding of what it is that you are understanding. And once you move from that point of understanding, you enter into a place of belief that nobody can shake you from. Hallelujah. So the depth of your understanding in the word of God will determine the depth of your strength and your faith. Let me say that one more time. The depth of your understanding in the word of God will determine the strength of your faith. So faith is impossible where the word of God is not deeply rooted. Faith is impossible where the word of God is not understood. So until you understand the word of God to the point that you can see it, not only do you see it in the spiritual, you also see it in the physical before it even manifests. Hallelujah. Then you begin to understand that when you now start seeing it in the physical you are now at a dimension where you are talking about testimonies and you are having what testifying hallelujah so faith is that dimension where you understand that it is impossible where the word of God is only superficially understood. You need to understand that the, 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 the word of God cannot be understood at a superficial level. Your faith needs to move into the dimension where you have such confidence in the faithfulness of God, in God doing what his word says. So the faithfulness of God is born out of that deep knowledge that you will have of the character of God. And when you have the deep knowledge of the character of God, you have the deep knowledge that moves you into a birthplace of faith that cannot be challenged, a faith that stands on its own, a faith that is not shaken, a faith that is not dependent on your friends, a faith that is not depending on the goodies that we are expecting from God, a faith that is not dependent on the materialistic side of God. Talk to me, somebody. Somebody needs to understand that faith, when you unravel this mystery called faith, you understand you are now intimate with the character of God. So what is faith, Pastor Fortune? Faith is judging him faithful who has promised. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, 11, that faithful is he who has promised. Hallelujah. So if you are to judge that who, that who says he's faithful, hallelujah, you are judging that, that person who is God, who is faithful in doing what he has promised. God bless you, Dima. Hallelujah. So every word is a good word and it's good as the one who has spoken it. Hallelujah. The word carries weight because of the person who spoke it. A lot of people can say a lot of things, but if those things do not have the capacity of coming into fulfillment, it's like asking somebody and somebody comes, walks up to you and says, I'm going to give you a billion dollars, but the person does not even have 10 rand in their account. That person does not hold weight. The words do not hold weight. But with God, it is different because you know that there's something that backs up what he says. If he gives you a promise that means he's got the ability to back it up oh shaka namahasata kariaba so every word is good as the one who spoke it. The quality of a word is determined by the quality of the speaker. So you now understand that God is a qualitative speaker. God is a speaker that carries weight. When he speaks his word, when the president of the country says, I'm going to do X, Y, Z, you carry weight and you are comfortable in that position and you are comfortable in that confidence that he is going to make sure he implements what he has said especially when he has said it in a public environment. Hallelujah. It is my prayer for you that after this service, that you will take time to ask God to reveal himself to you in a dimension where your confidence starts building up in the faithfulness that he has in your life. Hallelujah. That you will walk in the realm where God, you, you are not doubting God. Any doubt that you might have in God, any doubt that you might have in his word should be cleared up in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. So you're going to enter into faith. And my God, I pray that every single person under the sound of my voice right now, God, that they will understand and go into the dimensions of faith like never before. Make sure, make up your mind that as you enter 2024, it will be your faith year where you are now doubting God. Oh, shakadi abahasata kadi ebisi. Thank you, Jesus. Faith is seeing that light. 
that light out of the word, when you read the word of God and you see the light of God, believing in the light of God, that pulls you out of any darkness, becoming supernaturally empowered to manifest. You are becoming supernaturally empowered by the word of God to manifest what? You are manifesting the very word of God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Dima. May the Lord grant us faith. Hallelujah. You will see light of the word of God. That is the dimension you need to get, up, get to. My father, give me that dimension. Help me reach the dimension where I see the light in your word. Where it comes alive in my word, in your word, oh God. You, you, you get to a dimension where you believe it because it, it, there's a, a conviction that is fired up inside of you. There is a conviction that is fired up in your heart. You begin to walk in the reality of the light of God. You begin to re walk in the reality of the light of the word of God. You begin to walk in the reality of that light. You are supernaturally empowered to manifest the products of that light. There are products that come from the light of God. Any day, any time, any way, the faith switch comes on. When the power comes on and you switch on faith, you see light. And when you see light, you begin to arise. You begin to switch dimensions. So what is faith, Pastor Fortune? Faith is seeing the outcome from the onset through the word. When I see from the onset, before, when I begin, when I begin to pray, when I begin to read the word of God, I see the word of God. I see the outcome already and I'm already excited. Faith is seeing the end from the beginning through the word of God. When I read the word of God, I don't doubt the ending thereof because from the beginning, I already see the ending. Talk to me, somebody. Faith is seeing the realities of of the invisible beyond the uncertainty uncertainties that are presented by the visible word let me say that in another way when you when you are in a dimension of faith when you have unpacked this faith when you have unlocked the dimensions and you are living in the dimension of the faith that i'm praying you through this morning you are now at a, a dimension where you are seeing beyond the immediate but you are seeing to the ultimate Somebody says I'm moving from beyond the immediate to the ultimate. Hallelujah. I'm not influenced by what is happening in the immediate vicinity at this current present moment in time. But I'm seeing in the ultimate. I'm living in the ultimate. I'm seeing where I'm going. I'm seeing beyond where I am to where I am going. I'm seeing the realities of the invisible beyond the uncertainties of the visible. The visible presents uncertainties. The visible presents doubt in my mind. The visible tells me it ain't going to happen. But the realities of the invisible go beyond because I'm not looking through physical eyes. I'm not looking through the eyes of a man. I'm looking through the eyes of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for those who are sharing the live and tapping on the screen, my darlings. Hallelujah. I'm seeing beyond the obvious to the oblivious. I see beyond the obvious to the oblivious. Faith is seeing beyond what is seen to what is yet not seen. If you can't see ahead, ah, we need to shift that. Because when you get to the point where you can see ahead, no devil can stop you. So faith is acting with the certainty and the confidence that the word of God is true. I act with the confidence and the certainty understanding that the word of God is true. And when I act with the certainty that the word of God is true, because it is true. Faith is taking the word of God, the, 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 the word based steps. I'm taking steps in this walk. I'm taking steps based on faith. I'm making word based decision. I'm making word based moves. I rely on scripture. I don't rely on science fiction. I rely on what the word of God says. So I move by faith. I take steps by faith. I achieve results based on the word. I, I, I mark my paper according to the word. 
So when I make those moves, it is those moves that I make in his kingdom that makes that, that begin to make waves. When people are trending and people are testifying and people are looking at your life, they must look at your life and saying you are making waves. That means you are relevant. You are not just existing anyhow. Thank you, Jesus. So what is faith, Pastor Fortune, as we continue to track? Don't worry, I'm going to get into scriptures a bit more just now. Faith is accepting that revelational responsibility in order for you to experience the revolutionary possibilities. Let me say it again. Faith is accepting revelational responsibilities in order that you experience revolutionary possibilities. Somebody shout, I am possible. I am possible. I am going to experience revolutionary possibilities of God. Faith is functioning beyond the limits of the human senses to experience limitless possibilities. Nothing can limit you. For this dimension of I am possible, you understand that you are living at the dimension of limitless possibilities by virtue of you functioning beyond the human senses. You cannot function beyond the human senses. Otherwise, you will not get this thing. You will not understand this thing. This thing will not make sense for you. Oh my God. Most things that make faith, they don't make sense. Tell your neighbor it does not have to make sense. If you are trying to make sense, it will not make common sense because it is not common sense. It is supernatural sense that we are tapping into this morning. Faith is functioning and acting beyond the natural reasoning and the mindset based on the word of God. I function beyond the human reasoning. I function beyond the capacities of the current mindset in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. So what is important is not whether it makes sense or not. It is whether it makes faith. Somebody type in the comment section. It must make faith. It must make faith. It must make faith. It must make faith. I don't care whether it makes sense or not as long as it makes faith. It is not possible to walk in faith without once in a while being considered a fool child of God. But the good news is that the foolishness of God is wiser than men. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. The foolishness of God is wiser than men. They may look at you and call you foolish. There is a time faith makes you to move before you begin to see where you are going. Faith says move even if you cannot yet see by the human natural eye. In the realm of faith, you see first. In the realm of faith, when the senses are in charge, faith is in chains. That's why you fight the senses of human nature. Because the senses of human nature cage your faith. They put it in chains. But when you move beyond the human senses, you go into a dimension where your chains are loosed and the chains are unlocked and your faith, you operate in a dimension that they cannot understand because by all human standards, you should be breaking down. You should have given up. You should have committed suicide. But the devil is a liar. Faith is word-based adventure into the realm of all possibilities. You engage in this adventure of faith into the, and you engage and you start venturing into the realm of all possibilities. Suddenly you're excited. Sometimes suddenly the baby in your womb starts to leap again and you begin to understand that I can breathe again. I can dream again. I can manifest again. I can obtain victory again. I step into scripture. I live in scripture. I see the picture of, of the future. I see who I am, what scripture says I am. I am stepping into the picture of faith. Somebody 
shout it right now. My God, I'm stepping into the picture of faith in Jesus' mighty name. If you will dare venture into this dimension that I'm daring you to venture in this morning, hallelujah. If you begin to capture the realities of that picture that you see in the faith realm, in the spiritual realm, hallelujah, in the world of faith that you saw yourself, the way you saw yourself before you found yourself there, Kanama Shotokodia, when you find yourself there, you will be grateful, although you will not be surprised. You can't be surprised about what you have already seen because you already saw this thing in the supernatural. It doesn't shock you. It will shock those who are looking at you. It will shock those who are saying, can God turn a man's life around that just like that, just by a snap? It shouldn't shock you. I used to, I used to say to my friend who's in Los Angeles, and he would say he's a pastor. He would say, nothing about my life shocks me. Because when I looked at his life, when he was here in South Africa, nothing was working for him. Things were so bad. He was even questioning at a point that he was saying, ah, God, am I really called? I was actually asking myself whether he was really called. He knew what he was doing. But he said, when, 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 when he got, when he relocated, and I started seeing his life change just like that, and I started seeing God take a man's life into dimensions that I couldn't understand, that I remembered that this man was sleeping on the church floor. I remember that this man got married and did not even have a, a, a wedding gown. There was no even a wedding cake. But here was a man who was able to marry the same wife three, 17 times more and do so much more. And when I said, but how did God do? He says, I'm not surprised. The only people who are surprised are people who are around me. But I'm not surprised because I saw it. There was a time I timed out and I went into the spirit dimension and into the spirit realm. I transitioned to the other side and I saw where he was taking me to. And from that point, I was set and when I moved my family, I knew exactly what was going to be the result. Hallelujah. I pray God one day will give me an opportunity and I will bring him on this broadcast so that he can give you that testimony. So you begin to capture a picture in your mind and you begin the, to see the reality of that picture in your mind. So it doesn't shock me. It doesn't shock me. My testimony does not shock me. It may shock other people. But it doesn't shock me because I expected God to do this. So beware of what you see. Whether it is negative or positive, beware of what you see. Because what you see is what you will have. You begin to understand, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So be careful and be vigilant about what you allow yourself to think. Because the more you think and you meditate upon that thing, that is the thing that takes expression in your heart and it, it, takes, it moves from your heart, it will take expression in your mouth and you, you will say it. And that will, is what will come to pass. So now I understand that when I'm now looking at unraveling this mystery of faith, I begin to understand that I cannot allow myself to wallow in negative thoughts because those thoughts will become my reality if I'm not careful. I will see myself, then I will find myself there. When I find myself there, I need to be making sure that I saw myself in a positive light so that I can be grateful and I can equally also get to that point where I say, I'm not surprised in Jesus' mighty name. So I draw from the supernatural virtues of the word of God. I draw from the supernatural virtues of the word of God and I begin to produce and I begin to have extraordinary outcomes in my life. Am I tracking with somebody? All this is inspired. By the word. The Bible has something inside that you can tap into. Make it your friend. Make the word of God your friend. In the word of God, there's something that you can tap into that can, can power up your whole destiny. It's not like ESCOM. It's not going to load shed. It's the, the electricity is not going to run out. Tap into that power switch. Tap into that high voltage scenario in Jesus' mighty name. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm tapping into the light of God. I'm typing, I'm, I'm tapping into the word of God. My whole destiny is powered up. I don't load shed. Faith, child of God, draws from the wealth of the word. How much word do you have inside of you? Take your neighbor and ask them, how much word do you have inside of you? 
that you, you you draw from the wealth of the word that is inside of you that is what is needed to produce the needed answers that is what is needed to produce the needed solutions that is what is needed to produce the needed result it draws life faith draws life out of the word of god faith draws the light out of the word of god that you require faith draws the power out of the word of god that you need are we tracking together God bless you, Nam. Welcome to the family. Thank you, Jesus. So faith is really living in the realm of what is expected, not what is experienced. Jesus, I just said something there. Hebrews 11, chapter, chapter 11, verse 22, bears me witness that I'm drawing from the realm of my expectation. I'm not drawing from the realm of experience. Now I begin to understand that this thing starts at expectation. It does not start at experience because if I have to wait until the material things are delivered to me, then I'm not living in faith. I want to live in faith. And what is that? Without faith, it is impossible to please God. But how do I please God? I live in the realm realm of expectation. Faith is living in the future today. It is living ahead of time. Talk to me, somebody. You refuse to be tied down by your circumstances. You are living based on your word-based expectation. My expectation is based on the word. If I need health, my expectation is on every scripture that speaks to health, that he desires above all things that I live in health and prosperity even as my soul prospers, hallelujah, I live on the word that says by his stripes I am healed. There are those who wait for things to happen and there are those who make things happen. People of faith do not wait for the future to happen to them. They happen to the future. And my question for you this morning, are you a person of faith? Are you a people of faith? Are you a people of faith? Faith, people of faith don't wait for the future to happen to them. They happen to the future. I, I said something powerful. Somebody type in that comment section and declare it over your life. I am happening to the future. I will happen to the future. I will happen to the future. If your ship does not come to the shore to meet you, swim to the waters. Swim in the waters and go meet your ship. You can't live complacently waiting for the ship to dock. If the ship does not come to you, you swim to the ship. You don't wait for the future to happen to you. You happen to it. I happen to the future. I will happen to the future. Oh, mighty Jesus. This word is, is so perfect. I don't even think I'll finish all of it today. There are secrets of the strength of faith. The strength of faith is based on the word of God. The word of God teaches us through the scriptures that reliable faith is word based. If my faith is going to be reliable, it has to be based on word on the word. So the possession of the revelation is foundational for my faith. Productive faith can only come about because my, my faith is based on the word. The availability of the word is the prosperity of my faith. Hallelujah. But the scarcity of the word leads to bankruptcy of faith. I cannot afford to be de a delinquent and insolvent and bankrupt in the area of faith just because I'm not loading myself with the word. That is why on PBP, I always teach people, you cannot pray without a base of word. Immediately when you now start hunting for prophecies, you fall to be a scammer. But scammers can easily catch you when you are, you are hunting for prophecy. But if you know the word... You understand that this thing, the key to unlocking it, the key to the stew being tasty is in the word. If you, lay, if you take this foundation I'm teaching you today, nobody can scam you ever. Uh -uh. Secondly, the secret is in the knowledge of God. 
Do you know the word of God? The knowledge of God will give birth to strength. The knowledge of God will give power and faith. It will give birth to strength. It will give birth to power. The knowledge of God equals faith. When you begin to know God, it equals faith. Don't worry. I'm still going to, I think I'm going to stay on this faith thing for a few more days so that we can unravel the scriptures. I'm going to give you the scriptures today. I just wanted to just lay this foundation. Belief is natural where God is known to you. If you know God personally and you're intimate with God, belief is natural. The only thing you could ever doubt is when you don't know it, when you don't understand it. People who doubt God don't know God. To know God is to walk in faith. The stronger your knowledge of God, the more audacious your faith. Oh, somebody open up your mouth and pray. Oh Lord, reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself to me in a dimension that I've never seen before. My God, reveal yourself to me in a dimension I've never seen before. Number three, the secret that you need is to understand the acts of God. The acts of God. There are things that you will hear that will explode your faith. That is why people who get, uh, uh, what is it? Who are fickle. When they listen to people uh, testify and they see that, oh, it's like I'm not testifying. It's like always it's other people that are talking and it's like they're hyping this thing up. Mm. Their faith is not exploding. Instead of exploding, they are envious and they feel, they, 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 they become judgmental, they become impatient and they, those are the people that chicken out. I don't have patience for such people. So you now understand that when you begin to see the acts of God, even when they're manifesting in other people's lives, even when they're manifesting in your life, it begins to be a sign and that sign begins to be a voice and that voice begins to be a miracle. That miracle begins to carry a message. There are words in, the, 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 in wonders. There are words that come out in wonders. There's people being pulled to God in experiencing the wonders of God. So yes, the acts of God must be there. Somebody say, must they always be praying for miracles? Must they always be confessing and declaring that miracles are going to happen this is yes it must because it is a sign and that sign is for a reason is to activate my faith and to get me charged up even more that sign that miracle carries a message a message to the world that there's a god that i'm serving that is living i i want signs and wonders to be manifest in my life they are following me i'm, I'm bragging about it i'm testifying about it because i'm trying to show the world that there is a god that is worth following there is a god that does not have to punish you to follow him Hey, my daughter asked me a question yesterday. We were having a conversation because I was, I was, I was counseling, I was, I was counseling somebody and I asked, I said, I don't understand how the underground gang can say that they have to hurt you for you to serve them. I'm talking about ancestors. Because when I asked one of my family members, who went that route. And I, I, I said, look, since you went that route, it's like your life is not going sharp, sharp. And she said, I don't know what to do. This is why I said, there's no way. If you are saying that this ancestor from our lineage is the one that called you to do this thing, I know how she was. She was a good person. There's no way you can tell me that our grandmother would want you to suffer. It's not possible. That is why you need to be careful of familiar spirits. Some, some people have fallen into the trap of going into and being pulled by familiar spirits into a world where they are suffering and they're thinking suffering is okay. Because the underground gang is telling them that apparently you cannot do certain things. You are called, if you don't do this, I will make you suffer until you agree to serve us in that way. No. How can a mother that loved you how can a father that loved you be suddenly wanting to do you harm? How is it possible? No, you tell me. God of wonders, where are you? I need the sign. The sign is a voice. In that voice, there is a miracle that carries a message. There are words in wonders. There are testimonies that come out. One testimony can preach a thousand messages. One testimony. Why do I make people testify on the WhatsApp group? Because there's somebody whose faith is dwindling. And they need to hear that testimony. 
They need to know that God has come up again and again. They need to know that even you at a point, you are about to give up. But hey, kanama shokodi abahasata. What's happening? Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Let me fix that for you. It should improve now. Hallelujah. Let me know that if the network improves there. Hallelujah. One testimony. One testimony can preach a thousand messages. We can sit here for days and days and read scriptures and keep on talking scriptures. But the word manifested in the power, the power of God manifested is what can change somebody's life. Somebody is not, if, if I'm to preach this word to somebody who has not eaten for seven days and I don't even have a bag of groceries to deliver, that person is not interested in hearing anything about the gospel of God. Which gospel of God that does not deliver food to my stomach? When you see men and women of God who are engaged and saying, I want to be a philanthropist. I want to make sure that people, people are hungry. It makes the gospel preaching very easy when I've got some food to give you. That is the truth and that is a fact. Testimony always releases a knockout. Blow out to the devil. It's a knockout to the adversity. Because he cannot dispute it. He cannot come back from a testimony. Let your miracle be shown to my enemies, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Rabashi, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let your miracles be visible and evident in my life. Hallelujah. Let your testimony be preaching to a thousand people. You're fulfilling your needs. Don't make anyone make you feel as if you are doing something wrong by praying to your God and insisting that God meets your needs. They'll say, ah, must you guys always be asking your God for things? Yes, we want the things so that we can help others to also have things. I want to be a blessing to my generation. I want to be a blessing. How am I doing for time? 10 more minutes. Let me see if I can wrap it up. I want to be a blessing to other people. Don't tell me I shouldn't desire to have more money. I want more money because I want to bless other people. Jesus, somebody say, I have the faith of God. I have the faith of God. We're going to go into prayer soon. I have the faith of God. I have the faith of God. Romans chapter 16 verse 25 says, now to him who is able to establish and strengthen you in the faith, according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, according to the revelation of the mystery, according to the revelation of the plan of salvation, the revelation of the mystery, the plan of salvation, which he has been kept secret for long ages past. What is a mystery, Pastor Fortune? A mystery comes from the word mysterious. A mystery in biblical terms does not mean darkness. A mystery in biblical terms simply means something that has been kept in secret, ready to be revealed in time. It is a secret now, but it's ready to be revealed in time. Today, before you leave this broadcast, there must be an unraveling of this mystery. For the believer, faith is not supposed to be a mystery, but it must be understood. God, I need to understand this faith thing. In the book of 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 9, the Bible says, but upholding and fully understanding the mystery that is the true doctrine, upholding, allow me to teach. If you don't mind, you can give me an extra 15 minutes. Is that okay with you? Upholding, 1 Timothy 3 verse 9, if you're writing notes on the screen upholding and fully understanding. I uphold the mystery. I understand the mystery fully. That means I understand the true doctrine of the Christian faith. I need to understand fully. I need to come to the fullness of understanding this doctrine called faith with a clear conscience 
which results from behavior that will now be consistent with my spiritual maturity. I came in like a babe. I came in drinking milk, but I get to meat eating. I eat the word. I eat meat, raw meat, 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 meat of the word. I grow up spiritually. Thank you, Tumza. So now I begin to understand this thing called mystery. That is the true doctrine, the mystery. That is the actual thing that he has called me for. Why must I unravel this mystery of faith? Because my life is dependent on it. My, the quality of my life. I said the quality, it relies on faith. The quality of my life, the durability, the, the, the endurance that I'm going to have in my life is dependent on this faith walk. Hallelujah. Habakkuk 2 verse 4 says, Look at the proud one. His soul is not right within him, but the righteous will live by his faith in the true God. The righteous, the righteous, me and you, will live by faith in our true God. Our spiritual wealth, when I began, I started telling you that your spiritual wealth and your spiritual worth is faith determined. It is determined by faith. Talk to me, somebody. I check the scriptures. I get to Hebrews 6 verse 12. The Bible says that so that you will not be spiritually sluggish. Come on, somebody. The word teaches you. He says you must not be sluggish spiritually. Don't be lazy. Don't be a vagabond lie about hoboristic tendencies about your spiritual faith. But instead, be ye in imitators of those who through faith lean on God with absolute trust. He says, be imitators of those who are following God staunchly. They lean on God. They lean on the faith of God. Hallelujah. With absolute trust. They lean on the confidence that is in him. They lean on his power. They are patient and they are enduring even the suffering that may be presented to them. Even now. And why? And what happens? They inherit the promise because they hold on. They hold on. And then their work, their lives begin to take shape. Their lives begin to show that they are worthy lives. Their lives begin to show well. Talk to me, somebody. There is an inheritance that needs to be unlocked child of God, but it is given through the portals of faith. There is an inheritance that you can only unlock through the portals of faith. Our existence and our survival is anchored on faith on this earth. Romans 1.17 says, For in the gospel of righteousness of God is revealed, both springing forth from faith and leading to faith, disclosed in such a way that awakens more and more faith, as it is written and forever it remains written, that the just and the upright shall live by faith. Hmm. My God. God help me. I'm crossing into a dimension. When I go through scriptures like this, it takes me to dimensions where, where I understand that when I don't live, when I don't feel like I'm living, when I feel like I'm dying, it's because ah, Rabba Shunama Siya Rabaha child of God understand you have no life outside faith you have no life outside faith outside of faith God is not pleased with you now faith is the assurance it is the assurance it is the assurance it is the insurance policy it is the title deed it is that confirmation of the things that you are hoping for it is the thing that you are divinely guaranteed that hope if you're not hoping there's nothing that can be guaranteed it is the evidence of things that are not seen the conviction that you have that they are actually a real thing they are the reality better than the facts that you seem to be experiencing faith is the conviction of that reality faith compre comprehends as a fact that cannot be experienced by the physical senses. I cannot rely on my physical senses. Otherwise, it will set me up for failure. I cannot. If you can't see your faith, you cannot have anything to offer. Let me say that to somebody again so that you hear it. If you cannot see your faith, you don't have anything to offer. Hello, Yvette from Maryland. God bless you, my sweetheart. Welcome to our broadcast. Oh, shakaraba satan. The way of faith is the pathway to pleasing God. The way of faith is the pathway to pleasing God. The way of faith is the pathway to pleasing God. 
and the way of existence under the influence of God here on earth. So if you are to become an influential person, you can only be influential by pleasing God and it's by existence through faith. So now I begin to see alignment. I'm aligned with the word of God and I'm aligned. And when I'm aligned with his word, I'm not scared to launch out into the deep. I'm not, I'm not scared to, lo to, to lower my nets because I'm guaranteed there's a catch that is coming. I don't have an opinion. I, I might have been an experienced fisherman for years, but when he tells me launch out into the deep and throw in your nets one more time, I don't debate with him. I don't argue with him. Faith is to see a wall and call it a road. You might see the wall and it looks like you cannot go through this wall, but I call it a road. The devil calls it a barricade. The, the devil says this, you will not go through this wall. I say, I see a road. Hey, what do you see? Faith is rehearsing what God says about you. What is the matter of the faith? What, what is the matter that matters the matter? What does God say about you? Child of God, spiritual things do not make sense to the unbeliever. But to us, the believers, it is the wisdom of God. It might not make sense to you who come. If you are an unbeliever, you are a troller, it will not make sense to you. But for me, it makes every absolute sense. It is the wisdom of God. I see a road. Ah, Dima. What do you see? You see a wall or you see a road? Do you see a mountain or do you see a road? In the book of Acts chapter 8, verse 30 to 31, Philip ran up ahead of uh, uh, the man reading the prophet Isaiah and asked, do you understand what are you reading? And he said, well, how could I understand unless someone guides me correctly? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Habakkuk, 10, Habakkuk 2 verse 1 says, I will stand at my guard post. I will station myself on the tower. I will keep to watch to see. I will keep my watch to see what he will say to me and what answer I will give as he speaks. As the spokesman starts to speak, when I'm reproved, I am watching and I'm seeing. Welcome, Ali Rose. Welcome, Mommy Favor, to the broadcast. And welcome to the family, everybody who's joining. So men of faith, we begin to understand they don't function by information. I don't function by information. I function by revelation. I need the word of God to reveal what I need to hear. Revelation is coming to the arrival of understanding by understanding. Until the words of God become the sight that I see, I don't have faith. I need to see visually that sight. Anytime understanding is comprehended, action is carried forward. Am I communicating with somebody? Oh my God. Let me even change my position. Koda Bahashote Kedia. Woo! Mara official, this phone is trying to give us a, a hypertension. It will not succeed in Jesus' name. Ha <laughs> ha! Anytime I understand, anytime I comprehend, then my faith is backed up by action. Understanding is when you carry the pages of scripture. Understanding is when you act upon the scriptures. You act upon the revelation of scripture. Anything you understand is fired up by your action. So those who are, do not who are not having action, my God, I wish I could even stand. Those who do not understand, who don't act, we see them. If you don't act, we know you don't have the understanding. So the depth of understanding of the word of God that you have determines your faith. Are we tracking together, saints? Your depth of understanding of the word of God determines your faith. Faith is therefore possible when the word of God, as I said earlier, is deeply rooted in your heart. 15 more minutes. I'm going to try my best to close up. Until you see there's pictures that are in the scriptures, faith cannot be arrived at. I have to see the picture in the scripture. Tag your neighbor, tell them, see. 
I have to see the picture that is in the scripture. Then my faith becomes a sure destiny. What is faith? Faith is validation. It is validation of what, Pastor Fortune? It is validation of reality. The conditions of your life are direct conditions of your faith. Therefore, if I look at the condition of my life, I have to check the condition of my faith. If I don't like the condition of my life, what is the condition of my faith? So now I begin to understand that wise labor is rooted in the understanding of what guarantees my faith. When my mind changes, my experience changes. But if my experiences, I don't like them, then I need to change my mindset. Hallelujah. But the problem is that sometimes people try to change their experiences rather than change their faith. So check yourself. God bless you, Nerissa. Welcome, Deluxe. I now begin to understand that I need to check my faith. I need to change my faith so that my experiences can start to be different. Anywhere where I am and I don't like the place where I am, I have to change the picture of that condition by the word of God. I go back until light arises from my spirit. Faith cannot be accessed. I need to then light up the word. I need to see the word. I need to put the light and need to see the light. It jumps out of me. The revelation jumps out of me and I now can begin to access the faith that I require. Oh, let me put this in a different example. Any money you get, not by product or by service, it means you have stolen it. How did you get it? How did you access it? You need to get to a dimension where faith becomes your comfort zone. You need to get to a point where you, 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 you show up with your substance so that we know how are you getting it? How are you touching people? How are you touching? How are you going to change your, the, the, the circumstances of your life? Touch their faith. Touch their faith. Now faith is the assurance. It is the title deed that I have and that I need. Faith is the change of the equation. Changes the equation of everything. It is faith that strikes a chord in the realms of God. It is faith that moves God. He's pleased by your faith. If you want to strike a, a chord in the realms of God, you need to touch it with faith. Faith must be alive for you to live. For me to live, I must have faith. My faith must be alive. It must not be a dead faith. So now, as I track through the scriptures, I understand that faith is the confidence in the character of God. Faith is the confidence in the faithfulness of God because Numbers 23 verse 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor is he a son of man that he should repent. Has he said it, will he not do it? Or has he spoken it that he will not make it good and fulfill it? Come on, somebody. Now I begin to understand as I was laying the foundation earlier in the introduction that the character of the speaker of faith is the validity, affects the validity of his word. So the person who's speaking, the weight of their words is affecting Makodi Abashonda. The validity of his word carries weight. It, it holds water because why? The character of the speaker cannot be questioned. You can't question the character of God. You can't question the character of God. Faith is having confidence in the character of God. He says in the book of Psalms 89 verse 34, my covenant I will not violate, nor will I, uh, will I alter the utterance of my lips. Jesus. My covenant I will not alter, I will not violate, I will not alter the utterance of my lips. If I have said it, God does not retract. Based on hope and divine guarantee of eternal life, which God and who, who is ever truthful in God, in a God who is ever truthful and is without deceit, he is promised before the ages of, of, of time, before time began. It gave witness to Psalms 89, that is Titus 1-2. It is based on the faithfulness without deceit, on the promises of God that were given before the ages of time, before time began. 
First Samuel 15, 29 says, Splendor, also the splendor and glory and the eminence of Israel will not lie or change his mind. For he is not a man that he should change his mind. God does not change his mind as if he's a human being willy-nilly anyhow. So that is why I rest and I stand in the confidence this morning in the faithfulness of God that I will walk in faith in Jesus' mighty name. I begin to see the light of the word of God. The Bible says in the, in the gospel of John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and without him was not, nothing made that was made. Hallelujah. Isaiah 2 verse 5, the prophet says, O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. For as I have faith, I'm walking in the light of the Lord. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7 says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. The, 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 we walk in a manner that is consistent with our confidence and the belief that we have in this Christ Jesus that we are following. And I see in the gospel of uh, Mark chapter 5 verse 25, the Bible says, A woman in the crowd had suffered from a hemorrhage of 12 years, but she believed and she acted hard. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I will act on my faith. I will act on my faith. Mwiza, if you can take this scripture, and if you, if you can take these scriptures that I'm giving you, if you can go and re-listen, you can, there's a link there on a YouTube channel. You can go re-listen re to this message again and again. And my sweetheart, you will realize that I've been praying for you from the beginning of this broadcast because I, I want to revive something that you can take to the bank, that you don't have to wait for nobody to ask for that prayer. The throne of grace, the, the, the curtain is, is being cut off. You can access the throne of grace for yourself, my sweetheart. But I stand in agreement with you for that thing that you are desiring. May your expectations never be cut off in Jesus' mighty name. As somebody is confessing in that comment section, I will act on my faith. When you act on your faith, anytime light appears, faith will arrive. Light, light, light. When light comes, there will be no doubt. Hallelujah. And I told you, it, you will begin to produce results. You will begin to obtain insight from the scriptures. Hallelujah. You will begin to see the manifestation in the scriptures. You will see the light from the word of God. You must believe it. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Father, from this morning, oh God, as we are about to close, oh God, we thank you, oh God, that we walk in the, in, the, in the truth of the word. You are the rewarder of those that diligently seek you, oh God. We are gathered here, every person under the sound of my voice, standing in agreement that you will reward us, oh God, because we are here to diligently seek you, oh God. And we thank you, oh God, for an open heaven. An open heaven, my God, that we can feel and we can see and we can experience the presence of God upon our lives. Because we know that your presence will guarantee, my God, that our life carries weight the way you intended. I pray for every single person under the sound of my voice that you will experience an open heaven in such a way that people will begin to have regard for you. People will have be begin to have regard of your faith while you are acting on the word of God and you are demonstrating on your faith. People will begin to have regard on this kingdom of God that we preach. What is faith, Pastor Fortune? What is this faith that you are begging me to, to go and tap and pull out? I am asking you to have that strong persuasion in the belief that God is able to do it and God will perform it and God will do all that he has promised to you in Jesus' mighty name. I'm asking you to tap in and you pull out from the depths of that thing in Jesus' mighty name. I'm asking you to be fully convinced that he who has started a good work in you, he's able to perform it until the very end, until the coming of Christ. I'm asking you to be convinced that whatever you are expecting from God before it has even been manifested in the physical that you are not going to, uh, uh, hallelujah, you are not going to feel as if it's going to be aborted in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh. Glory to the living God. Hallelujah. The Bible says concerning Cornelius, when he applied the key of faith and the key of sacrifice, he was a devout man and one who, along with all his household, feared God. He made many charitable donations to the Jewish people and prayed to God always. Sacrifice is another way of unlocking this dimension of faith that I'm begging you to go into. 
Faith is like a muscle that when you exercise it, it grows strong. But if you leave it to become immobile, you become weak. So my prayer for you this morning is that you will go deeper into nurturing yourself by studying the word of God. That you will not only apply yourself and always avail yourself to the teaching of the word by hearing. Because it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Make sure your ears are not listening to nonsense. Make sure that your ears are listening to the word of God. Not everything that is being taught is the word of God, by the way. Just because something is called a Christian meeting don't mean that they are preaching Christ. Faith comes by hearing, but hearing comes by the word of God. And the word of God is what will help strengthen your faith. Hallelujah. So as you continue to nurture and you continue to study the word of God for yourself, when I give you scriptures like this, what I'm saying, I'm saying go home and study yourself. After this broadcast, go and sit with the message, go into YouTube and listen to everything I've said. Go and verify. Sorry, hallelujah. Go and validate. Go and validate. If I've said anything that does not align with the word of God, just delete it. You will not be offending me. If you can find it in the word of God, run with it. Run with it. So as you continually nurture the word of God in your heart with great diligence, with patience, looking forward to the fruits thereof, it shall take root inside of you. You will behold, the Bible says, behold, it shall be a tree springing up and into an everlasting life. Your faith will be developed by you daring for the impossible. Dare for the impossible. Be like King David who dared Goliath and afterwards he has experienced an open heaven. David dared and said, bring me the Goliath. Bring me that uncircumcised Philistine. Let me show you what my faith can do. And what happened? God opened the heavens for David and he began to live under an open heaven by daring the impossible. I dare the impossible. And when I dare the impossible, I'm guaranteed an open heaven. I am guaranteed an open heaven in Jesus' mighty name. If you are to sacrifice in the area of service, sacrifice in the area of giving, sacrifice in the area of, of, of prayers, sacrifice in interceding amongst others for others as well. Watch what God will do in your life. So for a believer, as I close, faith is everything. Faith is everything. Faith is acting on the word of God. You cannot have an open heaven without faith. It takes faith to give sacrifice. If you apply faith and sacrifice, be ready for an open heaven, child of God. Oh, somebody type open heaven. Let it rain. Let the heavens open. So meditate on this word. Go back to the YouTube channel and listen to it. It's called the mystery of faith. So to God, I want to experience this open heaven. I need that level of faith, that God given confidence, that, that boldness that it will get, get me into. So Father, as I pray and as I close for every person under the sound of my voice, Father, I ask that your Holy Spirit comes and just takes root inside of us. Oh God, in Jesus mighty name. Let it build us. Let the Holy Spirit build and establish our faith firmly. I pray for you, PBP, and everybody under the sound of my voice, those who have just clicked follow on that button. You are seeing me for the first time. It's not an accident. This is a divine appointment. You will reflect and he said, I found a woman who was screaming on TikTok. I found a woman who was screaming on YouTube and on Facebook. And my God, and whatever she said, my God, it launched me to a dimension that I, 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 I cannot walk back. My faith has now been firmly planted. It has been firmly established by the Holy Ghost. Father, may your Holy Ghost grant us a heart of sacrifice in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for your word this morning today. To you be all the glory and honor and adoration in Jesus' mighty name. Father, open up our eyes to see the wonders out of your word. Father, open up our eyes so that we can see your word in a dimension that we have not seen before in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that we may know you and the power of your resurrection. Help us to know you. Show us the dimensions of yourself that we have not known before. Open up our eyes. Open up our ears to hear your voice. For out of your voice, 
every sign, every wonder we shall see. Father, thank you for your goodness towards us and towards everybody who showed up for this service, my God. Thank you for your word that you have given us, oh God. I have no doubt that every single person is going carrying something, oh God, that no man can take away from them. Nobody can uproot it from them. Lord, and as I close, I thank you, Lord, that you are drawing us closer to you, oh God. That we will see another side of you that we have never seen before in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, help us to know you like never before. I echo it one more time. Let 2024 be even a better experience of knowing you. And thank you, Lord, for answered prayer this morning in Jesus' mighty name. And thank you, Lord, that the spirit of wisdom and revelation will continue to commune with us in Jesus' mighty name. Every demon of doubt, every spell of unbelief and fear is deleted from communing with us in Jesus' mighty name. What the Father in heaven has not planted in our bodies is not permitted to remain there. Therefore, I command it to be flushed out as I pray for every single person with any infirmity, any disease, anything that has been plaguing you, anything that has been making you sick or stressing you in Jesus' mighty name. Let that thing be flushed out in Jesus' mighty name. As I prophetically declare over your life that the God that cannot lie will show you his faithfulness in this season. Before this month is over, before the end of the year, before the year starts, my God, God will prove to you that he is real my God I prophesy by faith power is coming your way right now power to manifest the results that you desire is coming to you right now power to manifest your expectations is coming to you right now father in this year 2023 and as 2024 begins, Father, I prophesy that the kind of possibilities that we have never seen before will be seen in our lives. The kind of possibilities that we have never seen before will be seen in the lives of our family. The kind of possibilities that we have never seen before expressed by the works of our hands shall be seen. The works of our hands will be blessed on all sides, my God. Whatever God you will do in our lives, oh God, will shake the community and it will shake the environment. It will shake our world in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I prophesy that the journey of faith that we are embarking on, my God, will be such a, an explosive journey, oh God. We will experience a faith explosion like no other. Results will begin to manifest. They are starting from today, right now. Father, as we close, oh God, before this week is over, this week that is starting, oh God, before it is over, we will see dimensions of you that we have never seen before in Jesus' mighty name. A testing money that you have never heard before that is related to something that you desire. May you receive it and take hold of it right now in Jesus' mighty name. I declare you are receiving a, a testimony for something you have been believing God for in a dimension that you have never envisioned before. After the service today, you will realize that those that wait on the Lord, they don't waste in life. Your life shall not be wasted because you have waited on God. This week, this week that is about to start you will experience a recovery on all sides. I prophesy that there shall be a recovery. You are going to experience recovery. Somebody shall recover all. Somebody shall recover all. There shall be a, a, an unprecedented way of, 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 of recoveries, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Very quickly, if you are in the broadcast and you have never received the Lord Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of your life, I want you to repeat this prayer with me because I want to make sure that I cement and seal with the blood of Jesus everything that I've said that it shall come to pass, that your faith is going to switch. If you have backslidden and you want to repent, say this prayer with me right now. Lord Jesus, I invite you, come into my life. Be Lord over my life, oh God. I confess with my mouth that which I believe in my heart, that you rose on the third day after dying, oh God, and being in in that grave for three days. I have no doubt. You died for my sins. When you died, you died with me. When you resurrected, you resurrected with me. And when you resurrected, I entered a dimension that I can unplug this faith level. I resurrected into a dimension when curses cannot have hold over me. I resurrected into a dimension when blessings have taken over my life and the life of my family in Jesus' mighty name. And therefore, God, I confess that you are Lord over my life, that I'm born again, I'm a child of God. 
that old things have passed away and the new has come in Jesus' mighty name. And I seal it with the blood of Jesus. The enemy cannot have any other thing to add to this matter. This matter is a closed matter. I'm entering a mystery dimension of faith like no other in Jesus' mighty name. As you shout, recover all. I see some others are declaring an open heaven for themselves. My sweetie, as your word, as it resonated inside of you, shout it out. I walk by faith. I live by faith. In Jesus' mighty name. I want to thank everybody that has joined the broadcast this morning. I trust that you were loaded with the word of God. I see you guys on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining. Hallelujah. You are moving forward. You are moving. You are definitely possible. Books are everybody on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining everybody on our platforms on Facebook as well. Thank you for joining. Thank you so much for TikTok, Mara Official and uh, Fortunal Online. Thank you so much. Please make sure you are clicking the subscribe button wherever you are. Click the follow button wherever you are. If you are on TikTok, make sure that you are clicking the follow button and you are clicking that notification bell so that you can be notified when next we go live when are we going next live tomorrow morning at 5 a.m for our prayers and i said it is going to be a short prayer because tomorrow is christmas in south africa so we're just going to have a short prayer not more than 30 minutes and then I will release you to go have all the Christmas goodies and Christmas lunches you have with your family. Michael, good morning from England. It's so good to see you, my darling. Noza, thank you so much for following the creator. Every single person who's on the broadcast right now, kindly follow me from the channel that you are in. Those of you on Mara Official, you're on my husband's channel, but please feel free to click and follow and you will find in that bio where you are, there's an email address that you can send a prayer request. You can ask me to put you in my WhatsApp group so that I can notify you when I am going live or when I am unable to go live. But every day, South African Standard Time, 5 a.m. Synchronize your clock to the country that you will be tuning in and watching me from. We have prayers every single day of the week at 5 a.m. South African Standard Time. So please make sure you join me. This Sunday, we have obviously our 11 o'clock e church, our online church service where we go deeper into the Word of God. So we will announce everything also on the WhatsApp groups. Just drop an email in that email address that you're going to find the 316 Life Media at gmail.com. You just say, please add me to the WhatsApp group as well. Keep coming again again and again please follow me right now don't follow incorrect accounts there are cloning accounts and please remember i do not communicate on uh, the tiktok channels i only communicate on the official channel so if you need to communicate with me send an email and you and and if we need to have a call or something it will be a video call thank you so much god bless you um youtube thank you so much i will see you on the other side hallelujah